So we're going to start today's video with a thread on X from Ashley Vance. Shout out to the guy who wrote a book on Musk roughly a decade ago that many Tesla stock investors actually say is one of the major catalysts for their investing in Tesla stock. In the first place, why? They learned a lot about the substance of the man Elon Musk, his personality, his values, his determination, his grit by reading this book. Now, Ashley's no Elon fanboy, back far from it, but I thought it was worth sharing this thread from Captain Obvious, who, by the way, knows how to create a salacious post, beginning with, am not allowed to say who said this. Ooh, controversial. Sounds juicy. You have to read now. But someone with a very, very deep knowledge of AI and modern factories says Tesla has a massive edge on the bridge between AI and the physical world. So, uh, no shit, Sherlock. Thank you, Captain Obvious. God damn, I really wish I could have figured this out before this person that you're not allowed to say who it is said this to you and then you told us because otherwise we would never have known. By the way, anyone want to speculate in the comments who do you think this person was? I mean, the most obvious low-hanging fruit here would be Jensen Wong, but who knows? Now, let's continue to read this extremely revelatory thread that has completely changed the story around Tesla because it's not like it was obvious. They're in a dominant position with a massive edge on real-world AI. Now, this person thinks the others are building humanoid robots don't have a great first customer. Yeah, this person is right. Tesla can test its own factories first before it sends the robots out to customers. The AI builders, meanwhile, don't have factories. And he's right. I mean, I've discussed this repeatedly. It's really important to understand. Never mind Tesla's real world advantage. They've effectively transplanted the brain of their vehicles into the humanoid robots. No one else can do that. And this is really important. But Tesla is their own first customer. They can get these things operating in their factories and being completely fucking useless and annoying and unproductive. And guess what? They're not going to ask themselves for a refund on the piece of shit robot that can't quite do yet what it needs to do to be valuable. Tesla has a truly unfair advantage that they've created themselves. They've earned this. They're having their own factories. They can put the robots to work and they can be absolute fucking garbage initially, then slightly less garbage and eventually become productive and then very productive. And at that point, you have a product you can sell to external customers. To be clear, Tesla employs over 100,000 people, many of them in jobs. That in theory, not, not all of them, by the way, not the majority, but many of them in jobs that a humanoid robot, even in the early stages, could theoretically help, assist, and eventually replace. And once you amortize the actual hardware cost, the energy cost to operate these things versus paying a human salary is approximately fuck all, meaning that there are potential jobs and tasks that humanoid robots could do in Tesla factories that it's not cost effective for a human to do. So Tesla, using their own factories, solving their own needs while training these things, can get them to a point where they're actually useful to external customers, then begin selling them. There are no other companies <laughs> trying to produce useful humanoid robots who have this advantage. So good fucking luck. This is a very, very important point. I'm so shocked, by the way, if only I had have been able to figure this out before this truly exceptional information that he's not allowed to share the source of was posted here on X. God, if only I'd been able to figure it out. Thread continues thinks people don't count Musk companies individually as among the big tech empire, but that collectively they have something the other big tech players can't match. Also true. Quote, I think that will be extremely important when the physical part of AI starts to kick in. Being able to bridge the AI into the physical world will be extremely massive. Wow. Another accurate point. If only I'd been able to figure this out. The quote continues. I think none of the other companies will be able to follow. Did someone say unassailable lead? Sure fucking did. Again, this is important. This is a reflection. This is a mirror image of what's happening with autonomy because Tesla has the fleet and the data and no one else has the data. And if you don't have the data, doesn't matter how much compute and AI engineering talent you have, you don't have the data, you can't solve the problem. And guess what? That's also true of the humanoid robots because Tesla, as I've said earlier, has been effectively able to transplant the brain of the vehicle that they were only able to build because they had the fleet generating the data into the humanoid robot and get 80% of the way there, real world AI. The rest in terms of manual dexterity, that's something that could be trained in a humanoid form. But most of the groundwork, the foundation was done via FSD. So let me spell this out. Tesla has the data for the vehicles, invaluable for autonomy, but also invaluable for getting a huge head start and having the foundation for real world humanoid robots. No one else has that, so rip. And of all of the companies attempting to produce useful humanoid robots, in addition to not having the data and being able to transplant the brain, they're not their own first customer. They can't test these things internally at scale, so they're double fucked, you know, like spit roast style. 
Remember, according to Ashley Vance, this is from a person with expertise in AI and factories. Continuing on, the person says, People have a tendency to wave away the complexity of how difficult it is to build the complex factories and warehouses Tesla already has in place. And a quote, I am still fairly long Elon Empire companies. Now Vance shares some thoughts. I've written about Elon's universe of companies for a long time, but had perhaps underestimated what this person was getting at. We have a ton of robotics AI startups now. I don't know. Will remain to be seen how much of an advantage having actual factories is. <laughs> but this felt like an interesting data point to share from someone who has lived across both worlds at a very high level. Now, Ashley, my friend, bro, whoever you spoke to gets it. I'm not sure if they went down the entire rabbit hole, though. As I mentioned, maybe someone said, actually, seriously, someone sent Ashley this video, at least from here. And then tell him to rewind and watch it from the start. So explain things that maybe this person didn't. The fleet collected the data, which created the brain of the vehicle, which was then transplanted into the humanoid robot. No one else can do that. And Tesla having factories to deploy their robots for training at scale and having expertise in manufacturing at scale. It's a triple whammy that no one else will be able to replicate. These are just the facts. Now, to be clear, there will be companies with humanoid robots doing incredibly impressive demonstrations of narrow tasks. But what Tesla is building with the Optimus humanoid robot is a generalized humanoid robot capable of doing essentially anything a human can do and eventually even more. It will start with narrow tasks in its own factories, but capabilities will quickly expand. Much like Tesla is the only company developing and making massive progress on generalized autonomy as opposed to extremely narrow, brittle, fake autonomy, cruise Waymo, etc. The same will be true of the humanoid robot. And it's critically important to understand it's not really about Tesla having factories to deploy the robots in. I mean, that's important. But in theory, an AI robotic startup company that has unlimited capital can just build unlimited robots and put them in magical fake training warehouses and not actually be useful to train them. I mean, in theory, you can do that. What you can't do is get the brain that Tesla has developed via FSD. That is so critically important to ultimately achieving a generalized form of intelligence that's capable across a broad range of tasks. So much like Tesla will be first and possibly most likely the only company with generalized autonomy. Now others will eventually get there, but will they ever catch Tesla on safety and capabilities? No, because they ain't going to have the data. The same is also going to be true of Tesla's humanoid robots. It may appear initially like some of these humanoid robot startups have made more progress because they may be able to demonstrate very narrow tasks. Oh shit, that's impressive. But it will create a false perception, much like Waymo may appear to the untrained eye to be ahead of Tesla on autonomy because they've sought regulatory approval for their robotaxis in very small pockets of a few tiny regions in the United States, which require pre-mapping everything down to the inch with LiDAR, high definition maps, and effectively what you end up with is what looks like a robotaxi, but is in fact a car on rails. And as long as nothing changes, you can just drive around the tracks. Yep, that's there. That's a thing. Okay, cool. No problems. I've been here before. I've seen this. I know what's here. But as soon as something changes, you see the videos of what happens when a Waymo encounters a new situation. It's not good. Ashley continues with more thoughts. It is super unique that Musk Co can drag people from Tesla, for example, to stand up GPU data center for Grok in record time too. I guess a GE, General Electric, is a historical comparison as a conglomerate that stretched across major industries. Musk Co seems to benefit from keeping the company separate and more nimble, but having a common CEO who can put people wherever he wants, whenever. Now this is true, by the way, just to be clear, this is not from a dictatorial, you must go here and do this, but think about it. If you're an elite talent, like top 0.1, top 0.01%, you want to work for the best, the GOAT, which is Musk. Now, maybe you're currently at SpaceX and you hear that they're developing a new vehicle, a pickup truck with a stainless steel exoskeleton. You think, oh shit, that was pretty cool, bro. You know, I'm a material scientist expert over here at SpaceX, but uh, hey, Elon, can I go help out on that for a while? Because that looks sick and my materials science expertise might be useful. Musk goes, sure. Maybe got somebody working at XAI. He's like, yo, bro, you know what? This shit on autonomy kind of looks cool now. We've got Grok Sorter, Grok 2. Can I go over there and just absolutely slay it on the self-driving vehicles? Yeah. Or actually, you know what? Maybe the humanoid robot. See, this is the, the point. Musk Co, as Ashley describes it, within that umbrella are many of the world's best and brightest engineers. People who have incredible talent and are very mission focused. If you have a massive brain and you want to change the world, have a real impact on real products at scale, why would you ever not want to remain under this Musco umbrella, so to speak? Maybe you're spending time at Neuralink, at SpaceX, at Tesla throughout your career. Why would you want to go anywhere else if these are companies where you can have the biggest real world impact by putting your gigantic brain to good use? 
Ashley finishes. Is there a real historical equivalent here? And that's a great question. Is there? Not that I'm aware of. Now, I look forward to reading some of the comments. So let's go to the main thread. I'm curious to see what people have to say, keeping in mind that Ashley is not exactly an Elon Musk fanboy. Many of his followers will in fact follow him because he writes for Doomberg. So on to the comments. First, we'll go with most relevant. This new sorting feature, by the way, I love it. We'll also then sort by most likes. First one, was it a shoe shine boy? For fuck's sake, Ashley. So let me guess here. If I hover over this profile, I might, I might find some things out. Just, I'm just, I know this is like judging a book before it's covered, but let's find out. Some random person says they're a doer of difficult stuff, a champion for talent, an inventor of things, a builder of machines, director in defense, nuclear, ONG, mechanical engineering, system engineering, and an MBA. Okay, cool story, bro. Ashley responds, far from it. Not a particularly pro Elon person, which is why I found it interesting. This, by the way, is actually quite funny because often I'm accused of being a deluded Tesla fanboy. That's why I roast it and say that, you know, sarcastically all the time. And therefore, if I appreciate and or respect and can point out things, my opinion can't be valid if I'm super bullish on the company or what this guy's been able to do. Therefore, I must be wrong. This happened a lot, for example, when I was calling out the absolutely brain dead morons who were investing in the EV SPAC attack. I'm like, you guys are stupid. Low intelligence, low IQ, dumbasses who are going to lose your money. Valuations make no sense. Common feedback. You're just a deluded Tesla fanboy. Fuck you, man. This is a great investment. Why are you stuck in Elon's dick all the time? Fuck you, man. Poor people just couldn't hear. So it is actually interesting to hear that this is from somebody who's not particularly pro-Musk. He's just particularly pro-reality. What's next? Would be so funny if Tesla ended up making most of its profit and being mostly known in history as a humanoid robot company. Especially after so many people gave them a hard time about the fake robot dances in spandex at the Tesla investor event. Now, by the way, uh, this will come to pass. Potential Farzad podcast coming soon. Accurate thread, Elon Musk knows a thing or two about the machines that build the machines. You're getting a lot of flack from this, but I don't think it's that outlandish at all to think that having an electric car company, a rocket company, an AI company, a social media company, etc. all at large scale, that you treat a shared resource pool may bring many advantages. Did Elon write this? What is with these haters, bro? We may have the same friend. I've heard nearly the same story. It tracks, I think Elon can pull it off in that he needs his factories to work well. No room for boondoggles, but he also can push innovation, which other OEMs will struggle to do. Tesla has been saying this stuff openly from the start. Uh, it's a good point, bro. I mean, hey, you know, here's a tip. Uh, if you wanna know what's up with Tesla, just listen to what Tesla says is up with Tesla. No, I'm not kidding, by the way. People have these weird trust issues and they project them out. Well, I can't possibly believe what they said. That's bullshit, I can't trust them. If you just literally listen to what Tesla is telling investors, they tell the truth. Again, I mean, thank you, Captain Obvious, Ashley Vance, for telling us what Tesla themselves have been telling us. In return, I hope Elon's paying you pretty well. Oh, soy boy alert. Bro, I can smell the soy and estrogen through my screen. Well, yeah, Tesla's building a multi-billion dollar AI data center as I type this at Giga Texas. Other robot startups could only dream to raise that amount of capital, let alone build that kind of data center. Yep, cool. Uh, thread goes on. I'm gonna keep moving here. Someone says, yep. Right, just switched over to the most liked comments now. I've got a funny feeling there'll be some more haters here because hate often gets a lot of attention. So let's see what the X algorithm delivers. We've we seen this one, you're getting a lot of fact. Did Elon write this? Was it a shoeshine boy? Here we go, see the haters right up near the top. Here's a good one. This becomes obvious by observing the abilities of FSD. It's true. And don't forget Neuralink. If you want to make a robot that can move and behave like a human, what better way to do that than integrating it with a device that deciphers the actual signals that humans use to move and behave? Interesting point from Tony. Hi, Ashley, not naming the person in question makes this no different to a tarot card reading. <laughs> I believe you, Tesla's FSD is leaps and bounds ahead of similar tech. Here's an interesting one. I mean, this is kind of obvious, no? Via X, Musk has real-time firehose of real-world conversations. Neuralink provides direct access to real brains. And the Tesla cars provide a real body with vision. Put them all together and you've got robots that think. I mean, bro, correct. Facts have been spat. There are only governments which are placed as well as Elon. I'm not even a stand, but most of the moves he makes are based. And he drives amazing product engineering, which can blaze trails for America, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> a one-man OG Silicon Valley. Yes, this all sounds reasonable. Probably the first trillionaire if he pulls ubiquitous robotics off. Probably. Tesla will be the reason AI works beyond stationary computers. This one. Most people, even the best analysts, still think that Tesla is a car company and will not properly value the competitive advantage that a fleet of rolling robots, along with humanoid machines, will provide Tesla's AI efforts. Absolutely right. So, just wanted to wrap this one up by going full circle back to the original post here from Captain Obvious. Tesla has a massive edge on the bridge between AI and the physical world. You know, another way to say this might also be Tesla is far and away the world's most advanced company when it comes to 
Ready? Real world AI. If only we could have known this before this post on X. Gosh, if I had known ahead of time, maybe I would have bought a little bit of Tesla stock. Oh, wait, no, that's what I've been doing with every spare cent. Huh. Okay, nothing to see here. Move along. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer has been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference, no more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people, right? Wrong, just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even wanna risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month, see how you feel. It's a no brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.